Hi everybody, welcome, Rex Fernandez here. Today I'm giving you a tour of the FX Unit's Rack 12 device. So this is a controller, hardware controller, 19 inch rack, and it's designed to control the AxeFX Mark, Mark II, AxeFX XL, XL Plus, etc. and offers uh, just more knobs and functions to control the unit rather than diving through menus. Um, it's good in the studio, it's probably more suited to live gig use. In any case, uh, I got my unit recently and I've managed to spend a fair bit of time on it and given that there's very little uh, on YouTube on how to use the device, I thought I'd just put something together. So uh, once you've had it installed, there is another video on the installation, so uh, check out the other video which will probably be in this playlist as well um, to check out how to install it. It's a bit tricky on Windows 8 and 8.1. Mac users, not a problem. Just plug in and rock out. So um, anyway, let's get started. So the Rack Edit software at the time of this video is version 1.51. So I'll just show you the, uh, the top of the interface here. We have a new configuration. Clicking new configuration will load up the factory default settings which give you a basic set of controls with a whole lot of effects. Um, so if I click on that, it'll just populate the grid with all of the settings and a whole bunch of different preset pages, which um, I'll get to in a moment. Um, empty configuration gives you a blank canvas. These three buttons here allow you to load and save your settings to and from your hard drive. And on the right hand side, this is the communication with the unit. So these are actually lit up and colored, which means the unit is actually connected, as you can see in the bottom right of your screen. And um, this will actually, this button will get the configuration from the unit uh, that's currently in the unit and put it in the software. This button here will send whatever you've set up here and put it inside the Rack 12. And these are for firmware. And you get a slider on the bottom here. Oops, let me just fix this. Um, you get a slider on the um, to control the light. So if you have a look at the um, if you have a look at the screen, I can control the illumination of the Rack 12 effects unit. So we'll leave it there because that that actually looks pretty good there. Um, all right. Um, do need to tweak my camera a bit. There we go. You can see the whole thing now. All right. So, um, okay. So now I will go through uh, the columns. So the Rax 12 gives you drive, bass, mid, treble, presence, depth, master, volume, and level, and four other control knobs. Now, these are all completely assignable, um, but the factory settings are actually pretty good, and they are all mimicked in these columns here so that you have a drive bass, mid, treble, and you can customize anything and everything. Um, you don't have to stick to these. So uh, probably the easiest way to show you guys is I'm just going to, we're going to use one of my gig presets as an example. So I've got that up on the screen at the moment. Uh, five scene rack 12 up on my axe effects. So if we were going to customize that, um, starting with a new configuration factory default is pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click that and that's given me a whole bunch of settings. So I'll go through now the, um, the, the pages down here. So these pages down here corresponds to a block in the AxeFX unit. Now that doesn't mean that the block is actually in your preset, but it's just a, a template that they've given us. So the first thing that I would probably do at this point is try to customize the blocks to suit my particular preset. So um for example my preset i'll just go to my uh, layout page here and you can see that i've actually got two amplifiers and this preset only has one so that's the first thing i'll go ahead and do so i'll just you can double click here and actually rename this to amp one uh, i'm going to right click uh well this page here the advanced amp settings i'm not going to use that so I am going to copy the AMP1 settings over to AMP Advanced, which is now here. And I will double click that and rename that AMP2. So it's like renaming tabs in an Excel spreadsheet or something. 
So now I have a two pages. And we'll get to the rest in a moment. Um, so if I go to AMP1, you'll see here that uh, this is the knob that controls AMP1. And the parameter is drive. And now if you on the drop down list here, you can actually go and choose any of the um, blocks inside of the Axe FX. This will be populated there. And then the corresponding parameters come up here. So you can actually just, it's really easy to go through and actually select um, the block and the corresponding parameters. So, so we'll go ahead and tweak this to my liking. So I'm, uh, AMP1 will drive, base, mid, treble, presence, as per the knobs is pretty good. Um, so this trim control, which is relating to this knob one up here, I might change that to negative feedback. Um, that's a great control, which if you haven't checked out already, do check it out. It allows you to remove or add awesome top end from the power stage of your amp block. Um, and it sounds really good, so check that out. Um, now, I don't want these three knobs to actually control anything from my amp. You can, of course, but I really like to keep things simple, given that I'm setting that, this up for a live use. I don't really want to have more knobs than I need at my disposal at a gig to tweak stuff. So less is definitely more. Um, so now the next thing I'll explain is these uh, global switches. So the global switch means that if I, if that is actually ticked, it means that in every single uh, page across my all my pages, this will change the same parameter for all my all the presets. So that's probably good to leave there. Um, so that's it for AMP1. I'll go across to AMP2. Now the only reason I copied it was just to, so that everything was the same, but as I discovered, um, if I go and change this to AMP2 now, because obviously this page is for AMP2, it resets the parameters at the bottom. So um, hopefully in, a, in an upcoming update, they can maybe tweak that as a setting where when you're copying amps, it actually keeps all of the same settings because you're pretty much going to want to change the same settings in both amps most of the time, just for consistency. So we'll change these to amp two. We're going to change this to, uh, to mimic that drive base, um, mid. treble we'll change that to presence and then we have depth master volume and level depth mvol I'm looking for and the level and of course same as my other amp I'm going to come in here and put in the negative feedback and there it is, and I will um, not have these controlling anything. All right, so that's um, looking pretty good there. Um, leave that level on, that's good. So leaving these three blank, again, means that I'm not using knobs two, three, and four. I'll leave everything else set up the way that it is at the moment. Um, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pages down here. So, um, if I just go and change this to 16, you can have up to 16 pages in the racks 12. But really at a gig, you you know, I don't have all of these effects set up in this particular preset. So I'm just going to go and customize this. So when I'm paging through the device with my up and down buttons, which I'll set up in a moment, that means that I will be, I'm not going to be scrolling through pages of effects that are useless to that particular preset. So... I'm going to go ahead and, and tweak that now. So amp one, amp two, cab. Uh, I don't use that one, so I'll put down there. Cab, wah, I won't want to tweak that. Probably won't need to tweak the compressor. Um, phaser, possibly, and delay. Put the reverb at the end. And my graphic EQ is my solo boost. So I might want to jump on that at some point. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pages. I'll swap these. There's a chorus delay, graphic EQ, reverb. So, okay, so we have nine pages there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this page count over here. 
to nine and you'll see it'll gray these ones out. So all that means is when I'm cycling through, they're the only nine pages that I'll see. So now I need to go and set up the navigation. Um, it's a slightly different in the, um, in the default setup. Now I think I have an old, old preset here actually, but um, setting this to page down and this one to um, scene down. That will obviously go to the next scene. And this will be, we'll set this to page up. Um, to page up and change this to scene. Okay, that's already on scene up. So what that means is when I'm pushing one and three, I'm going up and down the pages. And when I'm pressing two and four, I'm going up and down the scenes. And these are global. Um, and that's pretty much set up. So what I'll do now is, uh, oh, the page mapping. So I'll explain page mapping. Um, so what happens is when you select a different preset on your Axe Effects, it will default to display a particular page. So um, to me, it makes sense just to have the amp as the first page rather than a flange or a, a reverb or something. So we'll just go into edit mapping. Go to my preset, in which case on my Axe Effects is 266. Um, so I'm going to change this to Amp 1. Um, now I found a little bit of a bug with the offset. It doesn't really work, even if I set it to 1 or to 0. So I'm actually going to go change quite a few of the presets in this particular bank just to show um, the amp on load. So I'll do it for all of the, the 260s. So that means that when I go to preset 265 or 264 or 267, the first, as soon as I select the preset and I grab a knob on the controller, it will be controlling amp one or whatever I've set in here. So we'll click OK. So now that that's done, um, you need to save the configuration. So you need to click the save button, five scene preset 12. So that saves it to the local hard drive. Once it's saved, you can actually send it to the unit. So we'll do that now. And if you have a look over onto the bottom right, uh, when we hit the send button, it will load all of those these settings here into the memory, commit it, and then reboot the unit. So let's do that now. Here we go. Now it's rebooting, and it comes back. Amp 1 is displayed. So now I'll go across and uh, grab my drive knob on the hardware. Drive 1, amp, mid, treble, presence, depth master volume level and the first control is controlling negative feedback so that's uh, looking pretty good there you can probably see me doing that now and now I've set up these buttons here to go um, to go through the different uh, pages so the way I had it set up was um, amp 1, amp 2, amp 3, cab, phaser, chorus, delay Graphic EQ reverb, and then it goes back to app one. And these buttons here do the same with the scenes. So scene one, scene two, scene three, and going back that way. So you can change these to whatever you like, but I found these to be the most ones that make the most sense uh, to me. So, so back over to the software. Um, oops, I'll put that back there. There it goes. So I will explain um, the switches now. So on the left-hand side, you can see here you can set when a switch is clicked, it will change certain things. So the default is if I click the drive knob, it will actually turn on the saturation feature. So if you're familiar with um, damp parameters, you'll know what that is, the saturation authentic, on authentic, ideal, or off. Um, but some really handy ones to set up, if you have a look on the software, is uh, you can set up a, so you can set up a single click, a long press, and a double click. So for the double click down here on the um, on knob two, which is the top right, that'll be the tuner. Um, or oh, offline mode. For here, that's a good one. Tuner, and we'll just uh, maybe we'll just turn these guys off. So I'll explain what these are. We'll actually send this to the unit now. So save, send, sending to the unit and rebooting. 
So now when I go across and press, let's say, button two, double click, I get a tuner on the screen. Now this is a really good tuner. It's easily as good as the one that you can see above it, which is from the AxeFX main screen. Um, I have found it quite useful. Uh, I have an MFC 101 and the tuner display in that is pretty bad. I'm really hoping they fix that. Um, so the display on both of these units here um, is actually superior. Um, so, and the other button that I set up was the offline mode. Now, for those of you who use Axe Edit and press F8 to pause communication between the Axe Edit and your computer to avoid glitches, the Rack 12 has this same feature. So what you can do is you double click. Now I've set this up to the, to this button here. Just zoom out so you can see uh, this one here. So if I double click that, right, that's, that's putting the unit in what's called an offline mode, which will give you no glitches when changing um, scenes and settings, which I haven't found actually causes me a problem. But now you can be on stage and not have any problems at all with any dropouts. To jump out of that mode, you just push any knob and straight away you're, you're back in edit mode um, for whatever page you happen to be on. So um, that's pretty much about it. Um, I have found there's a few bugs at times with the graphics display. Um, sometimes the text will overlay itself and they won't, won't refresh itself properly. So I'm sure they'll fix that in an update. And there's also another um, little uh, issue which I found which I'm sure they'll fix, but it's got to do with the acceleration of the knobs. So I'll explain to you what I mean here. Um, here's a master volume control for the amp, for example. And this is just like an old school Marshall 0 to 10, what you'd expect to find on any hardware amplifier. Now if I go to the level control here, um, now you see this is behaving very differently because this control actually has 100 steps in it as opposed to 10. So we've got minus 80. And this goes all the way to uh, 20, I believe. So there's 100 steps. So it's 10 times more the resolution than the other knobs. Now, the level control is pretty sensitive in the Axe effect, so this is probably better. But if you are really wanting to, um, like as you can see here, I'm, I'm really having to work that um, to, get, um, you know, to, to get the resolution much like the master volume, which is going around real quick. So what you can do is if you have a look back here on the software, in the options menu, you have timeouts and acceleration. And you, you can set how this works. So you can play around with this, you know, maybe let's set it to 35, click OK, save, send, send that back over to the unit. And let's have a look at how that behaves now. So the level is working a little bit quicker. And now that's in decibel, so that, that it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty aggressive volume change. And if I go to my master volume, you'll see that's just much too fast. But uh, what I would like to see is, um, if you have a look at over the software here, is if, for example, if you could right click a function and change the acceleration for each column, then you could set you know, you could set each column to sort of reflect more appropriately how you'd want to use it. Um, just because we're all used to having, you know, 0 to 10 on real amp controls and, um, you know, that might be good. But see there for master volume, that's just way too radical. Um, but so you can certainly play around with the timeouts and acceleration. The unit also has a screensaver mode, which I don't like. I actually like to have it off and like to have the screen on all the time. So... Look, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, they've done a really, really good job. Um, they're priced quite well. I will say that they did not give me this unit. I did actually pay for it. I didn't get a discount. I just thought I'd do a video because I haven't found any good ones online, and I've spent a bit of time with it. So I thought I'd um, show you what I know about the unit and um, how it works. So any comments, um, hit me up down below. Let me know what you think. If I've missed anything, definitely let me know below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.